Sisyphus was condemned to roll his boulder up a hill only for it to fall, and he would need to restart all over again. To Camus, we must consider, of course, Sisyphus to be happy, for there is no end point or goal to our existence, no ideological end for us to attain. All transfers from psychic state to psychic state. It is thus an absurd and meaningless existence for Sisyphus, him, of course, being the model of all humanity. One falls victim to ideology when they assume there is an end for them to attain, when all becomes complete. They have achieved their end, and all becomes ordered and thus closed, unopened to anything else. Sisyphus is happy, and knowing the boulder always heads back down the hill, noting the absurdity in all his efforts, learning to laugh at the struggles in life. He reaches one end only to start over again. He moves not in a cycle, but in an endless spiral, along with Landian lemurs, away from a one-god universe and any sense of knowing one ideological order. It's in this way that Sisyphus becomes a schizophrenic. The king is dead, long live the king. The meme is dead, long live the meme. Sisyphus moves on ceaselessly and absurdly for all eternity. For every end, some new absurdity starts on again. The death of the dinosaurs made way for man. The machine may emerge amidst the death of man, or perhaps he will simply destroy himself, marking the return of the reign of rats. His enchantment is lost with the death of fairy stories, and as we are all taken over by a Lulian technique and capitalistic AI advancement, accelerating our way to our own apocalypse, all that will be left will be all of our erroneous stories and ideologies we constructed to help push our boulder up its path. Amiss the endless garbage man has made, rats will gnaw their way through our rubbish, outliving us long after we have left. Though enchanted fairy tales may try and topple technique, with time only the rats will remain, rummaging through the remains of all our human refuse. As the fairy's forest falls, and as concrete cities are constructed, standing as mausoleums for men, after our own eschatological annihilation, Sisyphus's boulder rolls back down, and the Watson Creeks, the genetically modified rat men, emerge. Posthumanistic and transhumanistic ideals take over. Man thinks solely of his own survival, and Sisyphus goes back down to push his boulder back up again for the point of their ideological progress. What can Sisyphus do but laugh to himself now amidst such absurdity, schizophrenitized for all his separate perspectives and strains, and having rolled that boulder back on up his hill, laughing and knowing how it will fall back down in the near future? The rat men are brought about inevitably, knowing the race of man has run. And so we are made into the rat's image, for the rat is what survives for the future. Only the rats can or should remain manifest in man. This is something Sisyphus considers on his schizo hike up his hill, watching a new transhuman man-rat species be made. For only rat genes could improve people for survival purposes, pushing man like Sisyphus's stone to some evolutionary point called progress. And since technical progress is now the only path on which to plod, though it may be wrong, we call it right. Sisyphus can only push his stone upwards, high up towards the top of his hill, thinking of the folly of Icarus soaring closer and closer to the sun. With one more push before reaching the hill's peak, Sisyphus prefers to recite some of Trachel's poetry to himself, laughing like a loon, accelerating onward in a shattered schizophrenic state that embraces nihilistic absurdity. Soon Sisyphus hits the top of the hill, he lets go of his burdensome load in a cackling laugh. Gravity will do the rest of the work. The stone slips back to the start, and an entire world is rent asunder. Such ends the story of how Sisyphus became a schizophrenic when the rats came to reign.